The cisterns are basically an underground swimming pool. They're a holding tank. We have over 180 cisterns, and the average one is 75,000 gallons. Some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit bigger. They're identified, if you ever walk through the streets of San Francisco, they're identified uniquely by a circular brick pattern, and you'll see them most of the time in an intersection. Believe it or not, those date back to the early 1800s. Uh, they started building these cisterns, and the first ones were built with, with bricks underneath their solid brick, and that's where you got the brick ring from. The cisterns now are made with concrete and steel rebar. If there is an earthquake, they're probably one of the safest places to be if they were empty, because it's just a solid underground tank. And that gives us the unique ability, it doesn't matter if a water pipe breaks or not, it gives you the unique ability to go over to a, a cistern and draft. What we're going to do is draft water from the cistern, and we're immediately going to charge this hose here coming off of our bumper line, and we're going to flow water back into the cistern so we don't waste any water. So right now the pump is empty, there's no water inside the pump, there's no water inside this hard suction, you can see it's pretty loose. So now I want to get water inside these two areas. What I need to do is turn my primer switch to the on position. So now my primer switch is, has power, the auxiliary pump. And now I'm going to activate my prime. And I'm going to do this for a period of 30 to 45 seconds. And once I notice that we're getting uh, some pressure water coming into this hose, I'm going to dial up my, my throttle on the fire commander so that we can get pressure. And then I'm going to open my bumper discharge so these guys can charge the line. Okay. So now I have good pressure here. So I'm going to go ahead and charge the bumper line. Give a little bit more pressure. And as you can tell now, we're flowing water back into the cistern. So now I'm just watching this dial, just to make sure I have good pressure. I'm keeping an eye on this hard suction hose, making sure there's still water coming into it. Once I realize that I'm getting short on water, now I want to alert my crew and make arrangements to get water from a different source. So our auxiliary water supply system, which was put in after the 1906 earthquake, is completely independent from the domestic supply system. It is gravity fed and it doesn't have any branches off it. So it's just main ductile iron steel coming through the street. So there's less chance of a break. And if it does break, it's divided up into zones. So we have motorized valves. If one zone starts to leak, we can close that zone off and we can still get pressurized water everywhere else. That has basically three main components to it. The first one's Twin Peaks Reservoir which is roughly 10 million gallons of water up at Twin Peaks elevation. And then it drops down to Ashbury, and Ashbury tank is about 500,000 gallons. And then it drops down to Jones Street tank, which is 750,000 gallons of water. So there's basically three different zones. And if you'll notice, the big hydrants are painted three different colors, blue, red, and black, to clarify which zone you're in. So if we're in the lower zone, and we have a big fire, and we use the demand, just like a few months ago when we were at Mission Bay and we had the big fire. We exceed the demand at Jones Street tank, then we'll put in Ashbury tank, and that would increase the pressure and volume. And when we have a big, big demand, we would also increase it to Twin Peaks. So we'd have all three zones coming into the lower zone, which would give us much more volume and pressure. So the auxiliary water supply also has two pump stations. One of the pump stations is the building we're in. This is pump station one, which is now our fire department headquarters. The other one is pump station two, which is over by Aquatic Park. So once those tanks are emptied out, we say, okay, now we're out of water. Well, not the case. We turn on these pump stations and both of these have tunnels that run to the bay and they suck up the seawater and they can pump it throughout the system. So we have two pump stations that would have an endless supply of water. We also have a fireboat, and along the bay we have five fireboat manifolds, and the fireboat can pump into the system and also charge all the hydrants from the fireboat. With a, a city that's prone to earthquakes, you can never be too redundant, and we have a lot of redundancy. So if, if one thing were to break in an earthquake, we could go in a different direction just to keep the citizens safe and make sure we put a fire out.